Hello and welcome to my lab. We're still working on that temperature controlled chamber oven furnace thing. It was getting a little bit tedious last time so I did a few of the details off camera. So why don't we go look at that first. So the main thing I've done here is uh, finish the base plate. You, you can't see it very well in there, but you'll be able to see it right here-ish. I put the mounting bracket for the heater element on there, which is just a plate with a slot cut out of it. Uh, and I also put some bolts at the top of the stands, and that'll allow me to uh, create a fixture or a, a set of fixtures that I can screw onto those uh, to hang or mount whatever I need to get in here to, to bake or Yeah, to bake I guess we'll call it and the other things I've done are uh, Well, I looked at these here and they had square angles on them and that's just a Hazard someone's gonna kill themselves on that. So I went ahead and cut all these angles off and smooth smooth smoothed those out oh, Let's look around here I've also added the uh, little mount here. With this will just hold the power cord, so you can wrap it around something. That way, it's not hanging out anywhere. And this little nub in here, I've added so that I can just prop this piece on here. And this is just this is just a cover I've I've uh, made from scraps essentially, uh, because there's going to be 240 volt prongs sticking out here from the uh, heater element. So I just don't want that to be something you could just walk over and touch. So we'll put a cover a cover over it like that and that should keep that just fine. So I'll still have to clean this up and, uh, and paint it with everything else. But at this point we can pretty much just start uh, cleaning everything up and painting. So let's get to that. Actually there's one more thing. I need to make a bracket to attach the HMI later. So I'll make one from this piece of angle. Okay, now we can get to painting. I'm only going to prime the inside because I'm going to be gluing insulation to it anyway. Then the outside will be painted gray with an orange and blue stripe because you may have noticed this is a theme I use quite frequently. Here is the ceramic fiber insulation that I'll be using to line the inside of the oven. It's not too hard to cut with a sufficiently long blade. In the absence of a sufficiently long blade, I'm just going to take multiple swipes at it.
good enough. Once all the pieces are cut, I will use spray adhesive to attach them to the walls of the oven. Now I will cut and fit all the fire bricks to fit into the bottom of the oven. This diamond masonry blade cuts through these bricks like butter. Quite fun. just like Legos. The leads to the heating element just stick through the insulation like this. And after all of that, I will spray the insulation with Rigidizer. This creates a hard surface and keeps it from deteriorating. It is apparently a colloidal silica compound, but I'm not going to pretend to really know what this stuff is. I've not worked with it before, so it's all new to me. Once the inside hardened, I checked the fit of the door, and then I sprayed that with Rigidizer. Then I patted down the corners to help them slide into the oven more nicely. There we go. Everything went unusually smoothly. I was quite surprised. The, uh, that adhesive works really well. Once you spray it on both sides, let it wait for a minute and stick them together, they really don't want to come apart. So that's pretty cool. And uh, when you 
put the rigidizer on, it's not so much that it becomes hard, but it's like a it's like a like a crusty outside with a marshmallowy center, which is actually really good for for this design because when I closed the door, I was hoping that the insulation would compress against each other and form somewhat of a seal, probably not a very good one at all, but uh, uh, the, my concern there was that maybe it was going to be too hard and it would crack or rub against and scrape and all that. But it looks with the way, I don't know how well you can see this, but it's, you know, it'll compress and move a little bit, it's just a little bit uh, crusty on the outside. So that'll probably work pretty well and we'll just have to watch it on the long term. It might, it might crunch, but hopefully not. We'll see. You can see the element in here also in its final position. And uh, I don't know much about the element. I mean, it's a three and a half kilowatt oven element, but it's not like you can get specs on these things. They're just replacement elements from Amazon. So uh, it's meant to handle 240 volts and three and a half kilowatts. But if it gets really hot in here, I don't know if we might break that thing, if it might melt or something. But uh, if it does, I can always just remake the element using canthal or nichrome wire, which is just regular resistive wire. And that's that's what people normally build their uh, kilns and ovens and stuff out of. So now from this point, we're ready to put in all the electronics. Uh, there'll be a, a box for the high voltage stuff down here. The HMI will be up here somewhere. I have yet to actually design that, but that won't take much work. And then I need to put a thermocouple in and all that. So. We'll be doing that next time, so uh, we'll see you then. Sir! Sir! What boy? Can't you see I'm busy? They've repelled all of our advances. They're pushing back. I don't think we're gonna make it, sir. Not on my left, boy. We're just gonna make it out here. Watch out, boy. It's coming in. I think I'm fading, sir. I, I think, I think this is the end for me. Don't, don't you die on me, boy. I've been through worse. I've been through worse. You might not get that leg back, though. <laughs> Problem solved.